Without a clear task management system, our tasks are going to be forgotten and nobody's going to do them. And this is the real backbone of our companies, tasks. If this fails, your company won't be competitive, will not get results to your clients, and everything is going to implode. But the reality is, is that there is a very straightforward solution that I've been using for over four years, and that makes task management so damn easy. It's what we actually use in Systemify. Let me walk you through the process so you can see how simple it is. Well, first of all, we have to understand that task management is also a workflow with a set of steps. Simple workflow, but a workflow nonetheless. So here we have the start button. And then the first step is to create the tasks. I separate tasks in two different kinds. One is ad hoc tasks. Those are the tasks that are one-offs and that they are not repetitive inside of our workflows. This can be like, I don't know, answer Eric's email, finish content creation course, something like this. And then we have the standard tasks. If we have standardized our processes, most of the tasks that we do on a daily basis should be standardized and therefore should be created automatically because they're always the same. So this is the kind of task that I'm talking about. In my company, like 80% of the tasks are standard and 20% are ad hoc. So let's see how I create each of these two kinds of tasks. Before I show you this, I'm gonna take for granted that we already have a task database inside of Notion. And if you don't have it, you can just simply go here to the templates and get this task database because it's more than enough. So how do I create ad hoc tasks? I have two different ways, but one that I use more often than the other because it is so much simpler. So let me show you the second one. The second one is having this new task button. You can place it anywhere. I decided to place it here in my personal workspace. And when I click on it, this just creates a new task that I can just type, select when I want to do it and, and everything. So I'm just going to delete it. But I do not like this approach too much for those moments in which I'm on my phone, maybe I'm on the street or something like this. So it is not very handy. So what I do instead, I use another app, which is called Todoist. And I have set up a Zapier automation that automatically brings all the tasks that I create in Todoist into my task database. I'm going to leave in the description of this video a link with this template so you can duplicate it inside of your Zapier and you don't have to set it up yourself. If you want to be using these three steps, you will need to be on a paid plan. But if you are not using Zapier for anything else, it is not worth it. So what I would recommend you is to just delete this last step. This last step just keeps Todoist clean from all the tasks that we are creating because we are going to be creating them in Todoist and then completing them in Notion. But well, if you don't care that Todoist just contains all the tasks that you created forever and ever, and then you can delete this and you can use this in the free plan. And why do I use Todoist? Because they have a very good text recognition software. So this means that I can type respond to Eric tomorrow and Todoist is going to read the word tomorrow and know that it's actually tomorrow. And then with this, we are going to be able to send this task to Notion and the due date is going to be tomorrow. Okay, so now how do I deal with standard tasks? This will depend a lot on where these tasks are coming from. For example, for my YouTube channel, every YouTube video has a very standard set of steps that we have to follow. For fulfilling my clients, we also have a very standard set of steps that we always have to follow. For example, here for the YouTube channel, this will apply the same for everything. I have here an automation that whenever a video is ready to script, I'm going to create all the different subtasks in the task database, scripting, recording, taking thumbnail, reviewing the frame IO, re repurposing video. And we can apply this everywhere. The only requisite is that we should have a standardized process. With my clients, I'm always very heavy on standardizing every single process. So every time we do the things the same way, because this is going to allow us to do these kind of things to automate almost everything. Okay. And this brings us to the second part of this process. Now that we have a way to create all the tasks standard or ad hoc, we're going to plan them weekly. So typically I do this every Friday night or every Sunday night. If on Friday night I was doing another thing. And the purpose of this is because I love the perspective that a week gives me. And I do this on a particular view in Notion, which is this one over here. Here on the left, we have all the unscheduled tasks. And here on the right, we have the weekly view of all the tasks that I have pending. And the only thing that I need to do is to check all my tasks, 
see what I want to do this week and assign a date to it. And that is it. And it's going to appear here. And I'm going to fill the week with all the tasks that I want to do. Once that is done, I'm just going to reread everything to make sure that it makes sense and that it has a flow and that I'm not over scheduling or under scheduling. And that will be it. That will be how I plan my weeks. But now after weekly planning, I have another step, which is daily planning. This happens every night before the day that I'm going to plan. And the purpose of this is basically to tell my tomorrow self the order in which I am going to be executing every task. I'm not a very big believer on time blocking, but I'm about to show you may resemble time blocking, but I don't use it that way. I just use it to create the order in which I'm going to do every task. And how does this work? Well, I'm going to be using Notion Calendar for this, which is very recent, and I'm loving it for this use case. First, we will have to connect our tasks database to Notion Calendar that I'm going to leave in the description of this video how to do that because I have already covered it in another video. And once that is done, all our tasks are going to appear in our calendar. Let me show you. So during the weekly review, we're just scheduling the day inside of the tasks. So they are all going to appear here on the top. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take all the tasks from here and I'm just going to drag them over here to assign them a time. Again, I told you this looks like time blocking, but basically this is just going to order the tasks for us to see later in Notion, which I'm about to show you. So yes, every day I'm just going to come here and drag all the tasks from here to the top to here. And this also helps me a lot because I can see all the meetings that I have, all the fixed things that I always do. So I can schedule my tasks around that and kind of give me a sense of whether I'm going to have time to do everything or not. And now if I go back to Notion, lately I've also been using this home page. And in this view, I'm being shown all the different tasks from my task database that are assigned to myself. And what I do is I have this view favorited over here. You can do so just by clicking this star icon. And these are all the tasks that I need to do today, sorted by time. So when I wake up in the morning, I will just have to come to the top task and start doing it. Once I'm done, I'm going to mark it as done and continue with the next one. And that is it. And the cool thing about this view is that it is filtered by the person that is looking at this view. So I have this view set up, in fact, for the entire company, for everybody. And this is filtered by the assignee contains me. So this is a dynamic filter. Notion is going to look who is logged into the account and just show the tasks that are assigned to that person. So this allows me to have this task planning page over here for everybody to come and plan their tasks here. Now, apart from this view, I have other accessory views for also viewing my tasks. For example, inside of my projects, I have here a view of the tasks that are related to this project only. Inside of my YouTube videos, I have the same. I have a view of all the tasks that are related to that particular YouTube video. And that would be it. Four years using this system and it's never failed me once. I've never forgotten about anything because everything is always taken care of in this system. Because with this system, it's impossible that anything falls to the cracks because every task always appears somewhere and they don't get lost. So this is our task management system. I hope you liked it. And that is it for the video, guys. And as always, hasta la próxima.